I'm Linda Ogutu. Many thanks for joining us on KTN News Desk. Let's look at the top stories at this hour. Right, we begin this bulletin in Kisumu. Bungoma Senator Moses Wetangula was this morning rushed to the Aga Khan Hospital in Kisumu after developing breathing problems in an aircraft during a journey. Wetangula was on board a flight from Nairobi to Kisumu when he got suddenly ill. Cod leader Raila Odinga went to the hospital upon hearing the news which spread quickly on social media. The Aga Khan Hospital's medical superintendent Dr. Sam Oula confirmed that the senator was out of danger after doctors attended to him. The senator who was in the company of Funula Member of Parliament Paul Otoma in the flight walked out of hospital after two hours and addressed journalists about his condition. Senator was brought to the hospital today about um, 10. Uh, he was brought uh, from the airport via an ambulance after it was reported that he was experiencing some difficulty in breathing. Um, he was very sweaty and he was not comfortable at all. Uh, so he got here and um, th that's how he was brought here. I arrived in the country last evening from uh, Morocco. I stayed in office until about uh, midnight. Uh, this morning I left the house at 5 a.m. to catch a flight. I was on the flight with my brother Paul Otoma here. Mulize. And we landed in Eldoret in transit to Kisumu. Upon descending towards the airport, I felt some nausea. Then I felt some uh, shortage of uh, breath. Uh, alarmed, I alerted the staff on the plane who called out for any doctor present on the flight. Uh, there was a very good uh, doctor who came forward, uh, gave me some first aid. Uh, in the meantime, Dr. Tuomo also acted fast, uh, not to take anything for chance, called uh, the Prime Minister to send an ambulance and uh, as we landed, an ambulance was there. Uh, we were brought into this hospital and I must say that I am thoroughly impressed with the level of treatment I have received in this hospital. The equipment is uh, state of the art. Within less than 15 minutes of my arrival, they had checked my blood levels, my sugar levels, my everything, literally. And uh, they have uh, taken x-rays, they have uh, put me to rest, and uh, have advised me that uh, they can't find anything untoward on my health. They probably think it is fatigue having been traveling uh, this much, and uh, that is where it is. Say it was a false alarm. Uh, all the same, but uh, we're happy that our brother Moses is up and kicking. Uh, he's been given a clean bill of health by the doctors who have uh, done extensive tests and examination on him. Um, there's, say there's no cause for alarm at all. Uh, they're saying that uh, it was probably fatigue, because as you know that the Senate has been traveling extensively you only came back uh, yesterday into the country. We want to pay uh, a tribute to the hospital. We want to thank the Aga Khan Hospital for um, the quick action. Let's now focus on the aftermath of Kapedo and a somber mood engulfed Karuga village in Nyahururu as residents laid to rest one of the slain police officers killed last week at Kapedo on the border between Turkana and Baringo. 
26-year-old Ezekiel Shege was in the line of duty when they were attacked by bandits and killed. Friends and relatives gathered to send off the slain officer who served in the administration police service for only six months before meeting his death. He had earlier graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Science from Masinde Muliro University. Assistant Commander of Police Moses Kipsabu regretted that the officer died in the line of duty. Right, let's now focus on the famous stroke in famous Pastor Kanyari. And just a day after the Director of Public Prosecutions, Kiriako Tobiko, ordered an investigation on embattled preacher Victor Kanyari, Evangelical leaders are set to give their stand on the same matter. Now, the leaders who are meeting at Biblical Center here in Nairobi are expected to give their side of the story after religious leaders in the country came under fire following that expose the train on KTN. The Director of Public Prosecution says Kanyari will be investigated for at allegedly obtaining money by false pretense and cheating. Lofty Matambo is at that press conference. Lofty, if you can hear me, what can we expect from these leaders? Yes, Linda, good afternoon. I can hear you very well. Uh, we are at the Biblical Center here uh, along the street in Nairobi. And uh, indeed, the Evangelical Alliance of Kenya and uh, the chairmanship of uh, Bishop Mark Karuki, uh, they've come together meeting with uh, the Nairobi Evangelical Alliance leaders, about 10 bishops. And, uh, they're here to discuss about the insecurity in the country, but uh, the main agenda apart from that is the conmanship in the church. Uh, basically, I've uh, just spoke to Bishop Mark Karyuki, and uh, what he's saying is that uh, we're expecting to get a stand from them. Huh? Uh, they are saying that the evangelical churches in Kenya believe in miracles and also they believe in giving tight and offering, but they are not supporting conmanship in the church. And uh, they're going to give their stand. They're going to give also probably their take on uh, specifically what uh, Pastor Kanyari, Pastor Victor Kanyari uh, ha ha has been doing, or rather uh, in his church, uh, the, the, uh, the healing ministry, salvation healing ministry here in Nairobi. Linda? Lofty, since this story ran on KTN, it's not just the, re the religious leaders that have had an issue with it, is it? Uh, yes, uh, apart from the leaders, uh, basically yesterday some of the leaders from uh, the Catholic Church uh, had their take on the same and they were condemning the act uh, heavily. Uh, but also uh, the public, since uh, the airing of the story on Jicho Pebo and the inside story, um, the public, uh, uh, the, the public at large, have been conde con condemning uh, the act uh, by Pastor Victor Kanyari. And uh, out of yesterday's order from uh, Kiriako Tobiko, the DPP, uh, actually um, most of the Kenyans on social media and on various platforms have been giving thumbs up to the order from the DPP. So what they are waiting for is probably the investigation and also the text from the Evangelical Alliance of Kenya, the bishops, to give their take and uh, probably see whether uh, Pastor Victor Kanyari will be prosecuted. Lafter, you've, Lafte, you've been following this story for a while. Have we heard yes. from Pastor Kanyari as yet? Uh, so far, so far not yet. But, uh, okay, what we've heard uh, uh, basically from social media and also some follow-up that uh, has been done in his church, uh, the, the Salvation Healing Ministry, uh, Pastor Kanyari still takes a stand that uh, this is the work of the enemy. The enemy is fighting his ministry and also some of his assi assistants, uh, some of the prophets from the church, out of the follow-up we did from uh, his church, they are saying that Jicho um, Pevu and the inside story are used by the enemy to fight their ministry. So they still move on and uh, preach the word of God and continue performing their ministry. However, uh, it is hard that uh, Pastor Victor Kanyari on social media um, said that uh, uh, he is a human being and human beings are to error. But uh, one thing that is clear is uh, his wife, uh, Betty Bayo, the musician who came out and probably defended uh, her reputation and also denied uh, involvement into what uh, Pastor Victor Kanyari has been doing, uh, performing miracles and uh, obtaining money by false preaching.
Uh, Lofty Matambo, thank you so much. Lofty, of course, waiting for that press conference by evangelical, evangelical leaders. Let's see what they will have to say. Pastor Kanyari saying this is the work of the devil. Let's see how this plays out in the coming days. Now, the National Police Service Commission say today it will appeal the High Court's decision to so annul guess, recruitment you know, of 10,000 recruits in the police force. The commission said the Independent Policing Oversight Authority does not supervise NPSC to warrant the court's ruling. The NPSC also said a total of 172 out of 198 police officers that were vetted by the National Police Service Commission have been appointed to new ranks. Seven officers have been appointed to the ranks of senior assistant inspector general with three of those based at the IG's office, two at the Kenya Police Service and one each to the administration police as well as the Directorate of Criminal Investigations. To measure worker agreement, our Maakano, Umoja and how what was Safaricom, but the network of the National Police Communication is going to expand down there to the coast the entire part of the country, Mandela, but we are beginning with Nairobi. Nitengo ambavyo ama vigezo vili vyo angaziwa, ni vile vigezo vili vyo kwenye katiba, kwa mba lazima uwe na ufanisi fulani ya kuingia pale. Lazima tuangalie pia makabila na balance yake. Na lazima tuangalie hali ya jinsia pia wanawake na wanaume kuingia pale. Kwa hivyo, si kweli kwamba ilikuwa ni uhamishaji peke yake 63 officers have been appointed to the rank of assistant inspector general most of these officers will be deployed as the need may arise in all the areas where they need to operate within the national police service at the headquarters of each of the services in the IG's office or elsewhere in the field. Now, Kenya is ranked very low in terms of business index, with the country rallying at number 136 out of 189 nations. The Kenya business community says the major cause of the poor results is the issue of inefficiency in the legal systems. The country's business community points at the dragging of justice dispensation at the courts as hurting the ease of doing business in the country. This was revealed during the three days event dubbed Securing Justice for the Economy conference organized by the Kenya Magistrates and Judges Association and the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. So credible and effective legal systems made up of a comprehensive and enforceable commercial code backed up by an independent and experienced judi uh, judiciary are really vital ingredients in securing justice for the growth of the economy. As a chamber, we advocate not reinventing the wheel. Other jurisdictions, Singapore, Malaysia, and Korea, have led the way through the automation of their courts, and, the, and, and especially the e-filing of cases. What we are proposing is that there needs to be a less lawyer-intensive and court proceedings-intensive way of dispensing justice. An e-court should, should be a suitable way, in, or an, an option that we should look at, to ensure that we have fair, speedy trials that are essential for both small and large enterprises embroiled in disputes. So we are therefore calling Honorable Chief Justice that we need to really look at the way, at ways of automating our court uh, proceedings and make it less um, paper intensive. Indeed, uh, public finance agencies such as KRA, Public Procurement Authority and the Construction Authority of Kenya have proposed the establishment of a high court division to specifically handle and expedite their matters so that the substantial amounts of money that is tied up in litigation can be released quickly enough for the benefit of the Kenyan economy. And I want to announce that I'm looking at this proposal favorably and I'll be having discussions with the Judiciary uh, Advisory Council together with the head of the Commercial Division of the High Court uh, uh, President Justice Frederick Ocheng to explore the viability and the mechanics of such a division. 
Let's now take you to the western part of the country. The famous Mariel Academy in Bungoma Town is no more. This is after a demolition exercise carried out at the school just after the completion of KCPE examinations yesterday. The exercise, which was carried throughout the night and early morning, also affected occupants of houses adjacent to the school. The school has been forced to close early following the demolition that the owners Ernest Ominde termed a political witch hunt. But engineers from the Mgoma County government told KTN on phone that the management of the school had refused to heed several notices to pull down the structures that were built on a road reserve. They said they were left with no other option but to demolish the structures together with others put up by private developers in order to allow for the expansion and construction of the road. Mariel Academy is a renowned academy giant having led the country in the 2012 KCP examination results. I tried to protest, they refused, eh? and I got so devastated. Eh? Uh, the school was still uh, supposed to be on. Eh? Now we have asked our children to go, to go home eh? because they have nowhere to sit. Last one has been pulled down. The demolition is going on and we never got any notice. I don't remember we got any notice telling us yeah, the road will pass here. Let's look at sports now. Tens of Gormahia fans are on their way to Kisumu for tomorrow's season finale match with Ushuru. The tax collectors want to join the list of teams that have stopped Gormahia on their tracks in the final round of Kenya Premier League. Coach Ken Kenyatta has, however, placed his charges under pressure by criticizing the match officials, some of whom he accuses of being partial. Ushuru have threatened to boycott their final league match against Gormaya if the centre referee Amos Wanjala is not dropped. Ushuru's head coach Ken Kenyatta has cited incidents in three previous matches against Sony Sugar, Tofry and AFC Leopards where the centre referee Wanjala allegedly made dubious calls in favour of their opponents. He says he has raised the matter with the league referee's chairman GMT Otieno. This game is live in the TV. Everybody's watching even though they will just take it by force. People will see, like FC, what the FC did in Mumias. They took it by force. Yeah. We were not beaten uh, the normal gamers. They were given the game. Kere gave Gormaya a scare in the first leg match at the Moy Sports Center, Kasorani. And having played for Transcom during his eight days in Kisumu, he's not bothered by the venue change. Although he felt the switch should have been communicated earlier for logistical purposes. Wachezaji wangu siku zote nafikiri umeona wanacheza under pressure na wakati timu inashangiliwa home team inashangiliwa ndio wangu ucheza ni kama wao ndio wanashangiliwa. Ken Kenyatta sounded the warning alarm even as Gormaya wound up their training at the city stadium ready to embark on their journey to retain the title. Coach Frank Natal wants to make history by bagging the league title after his short two month stint and is not under any pressure despite the club having lost out at the final hurdle in previous 5 years. We don't regard it as pressure. Uh, we see it, uh, uh, what we do as a challenge and what's coming in front of us is a challenge and we embrace that challenge and look forward to it. And we look for a solution to, to the challenge. A win for Gormaya will bug them their second title in two years, regardless of what happens in the match between Tasca and Sofapaka. Ha Sanjuma, KTN Sports Today. And that is how we wind KTN's news desk. Thank you for watching. Remember, we have more bulletins for you at 4 p.m., 7 and 9. Thank you for watching. Have a good afternoon. I'm Linda Ogutu.